Welcome back to the studio, everybody. So what I'm going to do now is um, a very short demo for wood engraving, um, both engraving, go over the tools, and uh, the printing of the wood engraving. So the supplies that I'll need to do that are, of course, I'll need wood engraving tools. This is a liner tool. Um, this you can see the liner tool is straight. The end of this is curved. Let me find it. There we go. See the curve there. That's called a spit sticker. Um, here's a, another smaller liner tool. And uh, my favorite tool of all um, uh, is a square burin. The um, and that's probably because I was trained as an engraver to engrave into metal, and this is. Uh, the, the tool of choice for that, is, as far as I'm concerned, is very, very versatile. So most of the tool that I use in my engraving is this. But these other ones are very handy, and I'll go over the reasons why here in a minute. So those are the tools. There are a couple of different kinds of materials that you can engrave into uh, for wood engraving. Traditionally, what is used is the end grain of a, a plank of hardwood. Boxwood is the most traditional, although it's become very rare and that's very expensive. This happens to be some end grain cherry um, that I milled down to be um, what's called type high. For those of you who are typographers, um, this is milled to be the size that would go into a typeset. So I could engrave an image or a text, boom, set it in there uh, uh, and uh, run it through a, um, a type machine. Anyway, so that's traditional, is, is the wood. And it is very nice to engrave into, but um, it does take some, some work or some money to buy that. More recently, people are creating or selling, this is a, a resin grave block, and you can get this through McLean's. So this is a medium density fiberboard here, MDF. A lot of, many of you have carved your wood blocks out of MDF itself. Um, it's a good, Tool for that, but they use that to back this resin plate right here. This very flat plate that mimics the hardness of the wood and is a little bit less expensive. And um, the uh, image that's printed off of this is right here. So this is uh, residue of sharpie and, and ink that uh, is sitting on on here, which is why it's kind of ghosty. But it's a uh, gives you a very very crisp clean print as you can see there are some places with this stuff um when i was uh engraving in it i was a little bit concerned about and this is perhaps my lack of skill but you can see right in here if i can get the camera to focus on that some places where um it it cracked a little bit um and that may have been uh my error or just the nature of the wood engraving and some are the engraving into the uh, the resin grave block and something you would need to be aware of. What um, I am using right now, let me put all of these out of the way. Um, this is a uh, hips board or high impact polystyrene. This is basically like a PVC. It is much cheaper than either of those. Um, and I. Uh, order it. You can order it off of Amazon if you look up high impact polystyrene. This is quarter inch thick. Um, some people will also uh, engrave into eighth inch thick. It's just a little bit cheaper. Um, and this is just a test block. This is my first time engraving into this. And so I wanted to just see what the uh, tools will do. And I was very pleased with it. Um, gosh, especially for, for the price. This is a print of that. Um, and you can see the crispness of the marks. Uh, throughout and here I wanted to use those little liner tools to create a this is very small little uh, cube in a, in a light and shadow to see if I could get that light and shadow and then here just testing out um, uh, cross hatching when you do this uh, well I'll talk about that hatching and cross hatching uh, here for this demo so um, this demo, I'm going to um, do some engraving into the back side of this high impact polystyrene, this hips board. And um, it comes white like this, like a PVC um, 
white. And what I've done here is I've uh, sharpied it into black. And um, if traditionally you'll see people working on wood, they will stain the wood a dark, like a walnut uh, or a thin coat of black so that you can see the wood through it. And if I can, you well, know, maybe I can't get the camera to focus on this very well, um, but I can see the pencil drawing on this pretty easy. Ah, there you go, pretty easily. Um, it works a little bit different here. I can draw on this with pencil, but I'd still, since there's no tooth to this at all, it's a bit frustrating. So I'm working on maybe transferring, uh, transfer technique or something on there. But anyway, so I make it black so that when I engrave into it, I can see clearly what the mark is that I'm, that I'm making. Um, as a note, so when you engrave into a metal plate, a zinc or copper plate, um, you're going to wipe and print that like an intaglio print. So you wipe ink into those engraved marks and then print that. This is called or referred to as a white line engraving. So the mark that I make like this ends up being white. It's printed like a relief print, like a woodcut. So a white line engraving as opposed to a black line engraving, which is, makes it advantageous to in some way darken the surface that you're working on. Um, so that you can see what you're doing a little more clearly. Um, so with these tools, whether I'm working with this liner tool or a lozenge or uh, a square uh, burin, um, I'm going to hold them like this. The, the tool will fit into my palm right here, and my fingers will come around. And these two fingers come back into this little section here, my thumb and my pointer finger here. And um, that, when I'm actually engraving, I'm holding it like this and letting my finger slide, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. That way I can gauge exactly how deep and how, uh, what angle I'm, I'm engraving into this. Okay, so um, here it goes. I'm gonna make some marks here on this, uh, starting with this tool here with this square Buren. Um, I'm going to lay this down and gently lift up that angle a little bit and I can feel it as I push this forward. I can feel it catch into the hips board and then I'll push it forward and this does not take any effort really at all. One of the, the fantastic things about this is that it is really easy to engrave into this material. Um, when you're engraving into metal, it is a bit of a battle. It requires a lot of dexter dexterous uh, strength to do that. This requires patience, but holding back there, you can see that. What's the advantage of this tool? This tool is made to make these beautiful curving, curvilinear uh, lines. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to lift it up just a little bit, feel it catch, and then I can watch the um, curl of the hips come off in front of my tool here. And you can see that I'm not turning the tool, I'm turning the material into the tool to make these curved lines, okay. Some people will put a coin under here. You'll see some traditional wood engravers that have a little bean bag under here so they can move that around easier. My training as a metal engraver has always been flat, so I do it this way, it's just the way my body works. With this tool, um, I can make calligraphic lines, lines that are gonna go um, get thin, then thicker. The more that I f uh, lift, the deeper that's going to dive and the wider that line's going to be. You can see right there. And that's not very graceful. Eh, that's better. So I'll go deep. I'm going to go and then back out. And 
the more I do that, the more I can make this sort of rhythmic curve. Okay, there you go, there's that. I can use this tool to create little triangular jagged marks like this, just forcing the tool in to the material and leaving the material up right here. If I feel that with my thumb, I can feel those. And what's good to have there is a triangular scraper from your Intaglio tool set. I can break those off and create um, a kind of stippling effect. So the advantage of this tool, again, is the holographic nature of it and it, your ability to, to uh, make curves. A liner tool like this is just what it is described as. It's made for making straight lines um, and since it is very thin all the way across, I'm hoping this is catching it, I'm not looking at the video, um, uh, it doesn't get very wide. So this is great for just making long, consistently long hatching, just like that. There's not really any holographic nature to it. The value that's associated with it is due to the duration between the lines. The closer I get, the lighter value it's gonna be, farther apart, as all that basic drawing stuff, okay? So I'm not making a holographic mark, I'm making long straight ones. This doesn't curve very easily. Um, that's what this uh, tool, this uh, spit sticker is for. It's got the curved end so that it is easier to turn. Um, I have never made friends with this tool and that is my own um, lack of, of spending time with it. Um, it does do its job, as you can see, making those curves as well, but they're a lot, they're a lot thinner. I'm gonna spend some time with this and sharpen this up. Um, this is, the, the sizes of these are designated right here. So this is a number five, it's very wide. This is a little thinner, this is a number three. Um, this is a number 36. This is a, a very, very, very uh, fine liner tool. And um, uh, it is fantastic. It's a, uh, takes a little bit of work to get used to. So, um, when I'm, so there's hatching, right? If I'm cross hatching, I want to, um, what's best is to make your first lines that you're gonna cross hatch over shallower than the lines you, that go on top of it. So if I, let's make a cross hatch right here. I'm gonna go very shallow here on this first set of lines. I'm gonna try and go very shallow. Come on, shallow, there we go. And then I'll take a number three uh, and go over it so it's a little bit bigger tool and it's going deeper than the ones that underneath it. Um, if I go deeper first and then try and go shallow over the top, 
it'll work, but it 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 feels like it it scumbles across the surface and becomes harder to control. But that doesn't look too bad. All right. Um, the I guess the thing to really do um, is uh, the, the way that I recommend beginning this, if you're just a beginner at it, is to get a piece of um, material to wood or a hips board or whatever to begin to play around with and just take your tools and begin making marks and see how your body um, does with it. Everyone is going to relate to this material differently and end up making different kinds of, of marks and relationships to marks. Um, just like you would do a, um, a automatic drawing, just, just play around with your tools on a piece of, uh, of material um, and that will teach your body how to do it. It is um, doing this um, I am pushing forward and holding back and, and at the same time. And so it's kind of a funny uh, dexterity kind of thing. And you'll find that you get better at it. Uh, it's like riding a bike as you begin to do it. Um, you begin to feel how you don't want to start off like this pushing in. It, you know, it's very, very shallow. It should take no effort if your tools are sharp. Um, to begin to play into this material. All right, there we go. Some basic, basic stuff here. So um, I'm gonna print this now and uh, we shall see what this looks like. Well, actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to engrave a few marks into here. So I've printed this already, as you as you saw, and um, cleaned it off with uh, a baby towel, a baby, um, uh, baby wipe. And so the board's clean again, and that's what will happen over time. All this will wear off, but I can still read this plate. And I want to make a few more marks on here, and then I will, I'll print it. Um just so you can see a few more things happening. Let's see, here's this. Okay, I'm gonna clean a little bit of this up in here, create a little bit more light there, and A little bit of a circle right there, a little tiny circle. Um, make a few more echoes here. A few tiny little echoes here. bit more light down there and on up and all right that's getting boring for you all so I'll stop and print let's see while I'm at this stage one uh, thing that's really kind of handy to have around this is a um, uh, block of wood with um, an old piece of like 1500 grit sandpaper on it. It's there's barely any sanding on here. Sometimes when I am engraving and uh, like when I was doing these marks, that leaves a little bit of a bump around there and that can cause the uh, image to print a little strange. And so what I'll do is I'll take this old sanding block and just sand those flat like that. And I really don't need to do that here, 
This has been sanded flat before, and it needs to be like an old piece of 3,000 grit sandpaper. You don't want any grit on there. You don't want to, you know, rough up this with a piece of 220 or something like that. But I do like to have that around as well. All right, so what I'm going to be printing this with is, uh, this is um, some super graphic black. This is water uh, miscible oil based printing ink and it works pretty well. I like it in my home studio because I can clean up with just uh, actually with baby wipes. I don't even need soap and water around. Um, I'm gonna roll this out, regular old four inch roller. When I roll out and print on a wood engraving, these lines are so fine and delicate in here that if I have too much ink on this, this roller, this needs to be, let me get this into some, maybe some better light. Man, that's as good as it's gonna get, it looks like. Um, it needs to be very, very a fine layer of ink and I need to build this up um, slowly. Or otherwise I'll get ink down into all of those really refined marks that I was working so hard to make with the Burens. Defeat the whole purpose. So be patient as you roll this out and um, roll out a lot of very thin layers instead of trying to get in a hurry and over ink it and destroy your image. So go. I'm going to print this a couple of different ways, all of them with a uh, Baron. I don't know if the microphone's going to pick this up or not, but I'm hearing on my inking slab, I'm hearing a nice refined hiss, sizzle hiss, and I want to hear that hiss on my matrix as well on this block. All right, now I'm gonna inspect it, look close, make sure I've got that beautiful sheen. You're kind of picking that up there a little bit, it looks like. Make sure I didn't miss any spots. And let's see what I got here as far as paper goes. Ah. Okay, so this piece of, uh, this is a piece of Unryu um, that I have got a little blue on here. I was doing some uh, mono printing layers earlier, just jacking around. And um, there we go. I'm going to give this a print and see what it looks like with a little color behind there. Um, and so it's barely big enough, but let's see. There we go. Just uh, put this down, there we are. And it worked out just fine. What I'm using here is a disc baron. This is a fantastic piece of equipment, I love this thing. Um, and um, what I have here is a piece of felt that I have put a little bit of this uh, oil onto that. So I want it, I want my baron to be oiled up a little bit Sometimes if you, if this is dry, you can tear the paper. Um, if you watch some of the uh, old uh, Japanese uh, Mokahanga masters, they will rub this on their forehead to get some forehead grease on there. Just to lubricate that up a little bit. And what I'll put over the top of that is, this is a piece of uh, wax paper 
that I'll put over the top of that. So I, if I rub too heavily on that uh, delicate Unryu, it will tear that. Now with this, I'm, I'm being pretty firm with this. I'm gonna lay into it a little bit. With the disc baron, it's got all these little uh, nubules on it. And I'm gonna rub those around, make sure that they hit all of those spots. And um, there's the reason why I put this wax paper down is I get some ink uh, transfer through there onto the back. And I don't want that on my baron. Now, if you don't have a baron, you can also use an old school spoon. This everyday living right there. Um, I've sanded this down a little bit so it's nice and smooth and oiled it up. It's been used a little bit, so. And again, I wanna keep a, a piece of trash paper and you know, wax paper will work, but so will um, newsprint. There's some newsprint around here somewhere but this is gonna work just fine. If I'm delicate enough, I can just use this. Either way will work. Do prefer this tool. And That is that. Now, this, if I look, inspect it closely, that is a little under inked and it could be printed darker, but I do like that color peeking through there. So I'll mess around more with that later. There are the new marks that I made into it somewhere in there. It doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna print this one more time and try and get the ink level uh, correct on there and uh, print this on a, piece of western, thicker western paper. See what I can get out of that. This will print love really well through a press too, through a printing press as well. But um, I'm in, at home in my studio and don't have access to my press. So I'm just gonna use a Baron and the Baron is gonna work just fine. Once I get my, all the ink and everything flowing, get everything inked up right. One more time. As you can see, I'm not putting any downward pressure. I'm just letting this roll. The ink is gonna just love to fall off onto the block. All right, so uh, just this old plastic bag. What I've done here is I've created a very impromptu um, damp pack. And what damp pack is, is I've got my paper in there. I had a, a damp paper towel in there and I've let it set overnight. So this paper is nice and supple right now. This um, is, I believe this is an old piece of Stonehenge. You can kind of see this texture on that paper. And it's a harder paper. And so putting it in a damp pack and letting it get nice and soft is going to allow it to print a whole lot better than it would uh, if it was dry and damp and, uh, and had all that, that texture, that hard paper texture on there. Different um, papers are going to perform differently, and you just have to mess around with them, see what it takes to get a good print out of them. Like a Reeves BFK is much softer um, than, than these, and you probably have uh, less problems with them, but uh, you just have to mess around with it. 
um, dampening them does soften the fibers and makes that transfer happen easier. And uh, use this again, I think. Man, let me try it. You'll have to experiment with how much pressure you need to use. I'm sorry this is shaking this whole table. Um, everybody's body's a little in strength. Physical strength is a little bit different. So um, you might need to really lay into it if you're a small person. Or if you're a bigger person, you might need to back off a little bit. Um, it's just going to take you some practice to figure it out, how your body responds to it. That's feeling pretty good. It's not going to slide around anymore. This is a small block. It's easy to print. I know some printmakers who use Barron's to print very, very large, four by six foot-ish, even larger prints. And so it's a nice physical activity. I'm going to take this and just peek at this corner and see how this looks. And there we go. That's pretty nice. Still a little, I could have been a little more patient there in the center, but you can see how it's printing very solid black along there. So now I know um, with my next print, I could get this to print full on uh, dark throughout the middle of that and uh, get that to print perfectly. So I figured it out. I've tapped into it. So there you go. That is wood engraving. If you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, start experimenting and have fun.